Hello everyone. I am Amir Sharif. I shall teach you robotics in this semester. This course requires a basic knowledge of linear algebra. And the objective of this course is to model, control and simulate robots. We shall use these three books. The first book, Modern Robotics. It covers industrial manipulators and a very small section about mobile robots. The second book is about mobile robots and the third book, Introduction to Robotics. It is only about the industrial manipulators, kinematics, dynamics and control. Let's see the course contents. At first, introduction, introduction to robotics. We shall cover this section today in today's lecture. In introduction, we will, we shall define robots. Then we shall see the types of robots application of robots in the real world and finally the advantages and disadvantages of robots. After that we will learn about mobile robots. We shall discuss about localization, mapping, odometry, navigation in unknown environment and Specifically, we will discuss about the bug algorithms for autonomous navigation. After that, we, we shall talk about the motion planning. What is motion planning? Types of motion planning problems. Properties of motion planners motion planning methods, for example, the grid-based methods and the sampling-based methods. Then we shall learn about the special descriptions and transformations. These are some basic concepts used for kinematics, We shall talk about positions, orientation, translation, rotations and transformations. After that, we, will, we shall learn about the degrees of freedom of a robot. Then, configuration and velocity constraints. And finally, rigid body motions. After that, we shall learn about robot kinematics. In this section, we shall cover the forward kinematics and the inverse kinematics. After that, robot dynam dynamics. In this section, there will be some equations of motions, and the main focus will be on Lagrangian formulation. After that, there will be a topic of trajectory generation. And we will, we shall specifically focus on point to point trajectories. There is also a section of robot control. In robot control, there will be control system overview, error dynamics, motion control with velocity inputs, motion control with torque or force inputs. 
Finally, there will be a topic about grasping and manipulation. Especially, the focus will be on contact kinematics. So this was our course content. Now move to the next slide. Let's define robot. What is a robot? What comes in your mind? What is a robot? Something like this or something like flying or something like human. So the definition says that a robot is a machine that can sense its environment, make some decisions and perform some actions or tasks automatically. Why we need a robot? Initially, robots were developed to assist or help humans in their daily or routine tasks. But with the passage of time, the capabilities of the robots keep increasing. And now the robots have replaced humans in some particular tasks. Define robotics. So what is robotics? Robotics is a combination of mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, computer science, and it deals with the design, construction, and operation of robots. Mechatronics and robotic system. Robotics is the subfield of mechatronics. So it means that every robotic system is also a mechatronic system. But every mechatronic system is not a robotic system. For example, a traffic light automatically turn off and on after some time. It can be called as a mechatronic system because it is automatic, but it is not robotic system. Now let's discuss robot autonomy. What is autonomy? Autonomy means, robot autonomy means that a robot is capable of completing its task without help or intervention from human being. Autonomy is related to decision making power or decision making independence, freedom of making decisions. There are fully autonomous robots, the robots that can complete their tasks without any interaction with human being. For example, this floor cleaning robot. When you press the on button, it will autonomously start cleaning the whole room. It will first make the map of the environment and then it will do the path planning and then start following the path and cleaning the room without any intervention from human being. So this robot is fully autonomous. Then there are semi-autonomous robots also. Semi-autonomous robots make some decisions by themselves but some of the the inputs come from human being, some of the interaction, intervention from human being. For example, 
Let's take the example of this same robot, cleaning robot. If this is a semi-autonomous -robo semi robot, then what will happen is that, for example, let's say this is our room. And this is the robot inside the room. This is a floor cleaning robot, the top view I'm showing. So if this is a semi-autonomous robot, it means that it cannot, it cannot uh, autonomously navigate in the room and clean autonomously. It means that uh, it cannot do autonomously all these things. So what will happen? Human will give some kind of path. So I will give this robot some kind of path. Let's make the path a different color. Okay, I will say this robot. Okay, first you have to go this at this waypoint. Okay, let's make it with cross. And then you have to go at this waypoint, at this waypoint, here, here, and then finally come back. So yeah, I, I'm telling this robot to do things like that. And now what the robot do? Robot will follow these, this path while cleaning, cleaning my room. And if there is an obstacle, if there is an obstacle within the path, so now the robot have some level, a very small level of autonomy to avoid this obstacle. So the, ro the robot will go here and then it will follow the, it will avoid the obstacle to follow the next waypoint. And then similarly it will follow the whole path. So this is an example of semi-autonomous robot. Then we have teleoperated robots. The teleoperated robots, they, um, their task completing ability is completely dependent upon the human operator. They are being controlled by remotely by a human being. And then, as you can see in this figure, this robot is being controlled by the, this, from this joystick. So they are not autonomous at all. Their autonomous power comes from human operator. Okay, now let's see some applications of robots. Repetitive industrial tasks. So the tasks that require same kind of operation again and again. Robots are best suited for these kind of tasks. That's why robots are being used in automobile industries and similar industries, packaging or painting, assembling. This is an, this is an example of, uh, of an automobile industry. And as you can see that robots have to perform here some tasks, welding, cutting, painting. And because they are repetitive tasks, so robots are perfect for this kind of environment. The next application is search and rescue missions. Search and rescue missions, the robots are applicable in this area because robots are capable of working in an environment where humans cannot. For example, in a, in a disaster environment, a nuclear power plant disaster, humans cannot operate there. 
but ro robots can. So robots can, are the best application for these kind of tasks. In this figure, in the second figure, you can see a robot is trying to drill a hole in the wall to rescue some some people inside this building. Or it could be that it, the robots can repair some damage inside the inside the building. Next application is about assistance of elderly people. In the Western, Western culture or countries, there are more old people than the young people. The old people are also very old, like near 100 years old. So they need some kind of assistance and support at this time. Robots can help the old people there are socially interactive robots that can interact with the old people. They can talk with them, they can uh, interact with them so that they can have a normal, healthy mental health. If the people are physically disabled, then the robots can also assist them in cleaning and bringing food and feeding The next application is the package delivery. So as the online uh, businesses increases, the, the people started to give more and more online orders for to buy some food or to some other products. And normally the product arrive in two to three days. But imagine that if we use drones for this kind of tasks, then your package will arrive after a couple of minutes after you ordered it online. So these kinds of autonomous drones, they are in the test phase for package delivery. They are autonomous. You just have to give them the location, the GPS coordinates of the destination and then they will autonomously fly take your package and deliver it to the destination and then come back to the home position. Okay, the next application is cleaning. I think we already covered in the cleaning, floor cleaning robot. Okay, the next one is the mapping and photography. Robo uh, flying robot, for, for example, the quadcopters, they are, um, they are perfectly suited for this kind of job. They can, they can be equipped with a very high quality camera and then they can fly around and map the environment or take pictures. One of the application is to count the number of trees in a specific area. So the quadcopters can fly around the area, take pictures, or make a map and then after in the pictures they can count number of trees to estimate the total population of trees in that specific area the last one we have self-driving cars I hope that all of you have heard about Tesla self-driving cars and there are many others also so this is also an example of um, robots. This is a robotic system. It can autonomously drive. It can detect the lanes on the road. It can uh, it can detect when where is uh, how far is the obstacle. It can detect the human being. And it is the self-driving cars are equipped with a lot of sensors and. Uh, as the computers are becoming cheap and powerful, so the self-driving cars are becoming more and more uh, reality.
Okay, let's see the components of the robot. What makes a robot? The first is the mechanical structure. Mechanical structure is important to support the other components of the robot. For example, let's see in this figure we have this drawing robot. It has the structure of supporting the base and then we have links to support the motors. And here in this robot we have a different kind of structure to support the wheels and the other components. The structure can be made of aluminium or plastic or also the latest materials are the carbon fibers. Okay, the power supply. Power supply is also a very important component of the robot. It can be a main power supply or it can also be a battery. Sensors. Sensors are important for environment perception and also for feedback. In this robot, can you guys, can you tell that where is, where are the sensors located? Can you see any sensors here? Okay, the sensors are located inside this black box for for the position measurement of this joint here also here also and here also so there are three sensors here in this robot we have many sensors for example here we have an IR sensors for obstacle detection and this is gas sensor this is again an IR sensor controller controller is the most important part of the robot A controller makes decisions. It can be a computer or it can be also a microcontroller. Microcontrollers are fast. That's why they, they, they are being used in the real time control or a low level control. But for higher level planning and for higher level tasks, we need computer. So controllers are, they need to be programmed by some kind of programming language or software. So in this robot, this here you can see this is a microcontroller. And in this robot, here is the microcontroller. Both are the embedded controllers. actuators actuators perform the task actuators help the robot to move or to, to to perform locomotion the difference between uh, movement and locomotion is that movement means or the motion motion means uh, change of place but locomotion means completely moving from one place to another place this robot has has uh, has a uh, actuators. They are the they are the servo motors. One, two, and three servo motors we have. And this is the link, and the motors move these joints and links, and this whole actuator. And finally, the end effector for writing or drawing. But here only we have the motion or movement of the arm, but there is no locomotion. As the robot is not moving from one place to another place completely. On the, <clears throat> on the other hand, this robot, the motors are the actuators are attached with the wheel and 
this robot is capable of doing this robot is capable of doing locomotion from one place to another place so it will completely move from one place to another place and finally electronics and communication as you can see with the to communicate between between the actuator sensors and microcontroller we need some kind of electronics to filter to amplify the signals to convert the signals from analog to digital or digital to analog so that's why we need some electronic components and also some kind of communication medium wires or to communicate between sensors microcontroller and the actuators okay now let's see some sensors and actuators that are used commonly in different type of robots the first one is optical encoder they are used for optical encoders are used for position measurement they are normally attached with the joints or the wheels to measure the number of turns taken by the wheel or the position of the joint for example in this robot there are optical encoders that can measure the angle of the of this this link or this joint vision sensor vision sensors are many types for example a single camera then we have a stereo camera or a depth camera vision sensors are very important because they give a lot of information about the environment a mono camera can give information about the colors and the, the objects in the picture a stereo camera can also additionally tell the depth of the object from the camera and then there is a depth camera that can do the same work then we have lidar sensor so they are also known as laser sensors they are used to detect up uh, obstacles in front of the robot or how far the obstacle is to measure the distance of obstacle from the robot their principle is that they emit some laser light and then the laser li light bounces back from the object back to the receiver and then they estimate how much time it takes to travel and based on this time of flight principle they estimate the distance of the obstacle from the robot global positioning system sensor so uh, this is commonly used in outdoor applications in outdoor mobile robots it tells about the uh, coordinates the position coordinates of the robot with respect to the uh, global frame then we have inertial measurement unit or imu sensor imu sensor consists of accelerometer and gyroscope and also compass it is used for the pose estimation of the robot the position and orientation measurement of the robot then we have ultrasonic sensor ultrasonic sensors are used for obstacle detection and to measure the distance of the obstacle from the object then we have barometer barometer uh, sensor is used for height height measurement of the of the robot they are specially used in the flying robots for example in quadcopters and 
they tell the height of the quadcopter by measuring the difference in the pressure, air pressure. And we have optical flow sensor. They look like cameras and they are also used for the uh, position displacement, how much, how much the robot has moved or the velocity measurement of the robot. Tactile sensor, they are used to detect obstacles, they are usually touch sensors and they tell about the presence or absence of, of uh, obstacle. Okay, sometimes the, the measurement that you expect from the sensor is not that accurate. For example, this global positioning system, GPS sensor, the output is not that accurate. It doesn't give you, you the accurate location, okay? So then what we do, we, we rely on other sensor. For example, this optical encoder, they also they drift with time with time their values changes it's become inaccurate so what we do we use sensor fusion as the name indicates sensor fusion is the to to join the outputs of uh, of the two sensors or multiple sensors to get a better estimate of the measurement for example we um, for example we have a gps sensor and then we have imu and then we have another sensor let's say we have a optical encoder we have three sensors and each of these sensors have their own problems. For example, the GPS is not accurate, the optical encoder, they drift with the time, and also there are some also errors in IMU sensor also. So what we do in sensor fusion, we combine the outputs of all these three sensors along with some kind of filter and we expect that the output measurement, output value is better than any of these values, any of the input values. So this, uh, this process is called sensor fusion. Now we shall talk about some actuators that are commonly used in robots. The first one is simple DC motors. Simple DC motors have brushes. They are commonly used in, 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 in the mobile robots. And, but they have problem that they are not that uh, robust. They become, their brushes become damaged over time. Then we have brushless DC motors. They are very robust because they don't have brushes and that's why they are most commonly used in flying robots like quadcopters. Then we have servo motors for the, they are typically used in the joints for the position, feedback and control. And then we have stepper motors, they are also um, used for, for the position and velocity control. So in this robot, can you see some, some actuators and sensors and which one, can you guess which sensor and actuators this robot has? So what I can say that it has some kind of here, the, uh, this actuator, let's start from sensor. It has a sensor of uh, some kind of proximity or a color sensor to detect this object and then it has also some sensor like optical encoders to measure the position of the joint and it has actuators like 
maybe a DC motor or a servo motor to, to actuate this robotic arm and also the gripper, the end effector. Now the types of the robot. Okay. Generally the robots are categorized as mobile robots and then we have industrial manipulators and, and then there are some other bio-inspired robots or humanoid robots or soft robots. So these are the big categories. So for mobile robots, the first category is the wheeled mobile robot. Wheel mobile robots are, they have like normal wheels, sometimes four wheels, sometimes three, sometimes two also. So these types of robot, they are, for example, if there is a four wheel, it means it is stable. But if it's a two wheel robot, then it will not be stable. We have to dynamically make it stable, like inverted pendulum. You have to make it stable dynamically. Um, the problem with this kind of wheel is that, uh, sorry, these kinds of robot is that with the normal wheels is they, um, they cannot change their direction instantaneously. For example, if the robot is moving in this direction, let's say this is the X direction and I want to instantaneously change its direction to Y axis. So this robot cannot do that instantaneously. It needs some time to change the direction, like it will turn and then it will move in this direction. So the problem can be solved by using the Omni wheels with the mobile robots. So Omni wheels are the special type of wheels that, uh, that solve this problem of changing direction instantaneously. Omni wheel robots, if it's traveling in this direction and I want it to move instantaneously in this direction, it can do it. What it has to do, do is to just change the relative speed of the wheels and then it will start moving in this direction without turning, without taking any extra time. Okay. There are more types of mobile robots and the third one is the differential, differential drive robots. So this is a two wheel mobile robot and Maybe it, uh, it, is, it is possible that there are only two wheels and it is dynamically stable. It's self-balancing kind of robot. And it's also possible that there, are also, there is also a third idle wheel uh, here or on the back side of the robot to make it, to support it, to make it stable. So how these, these kind of robot, they turn, they turn, for example, um, if it's moving in this direction, x direction, and I want to move it in this direction. So one thing they can do is they can turn first, rotate, rotate in this direction, into y direction. All it has to do is to just not move this side of wheel and move the move only the other side of the wheel and then it will start moving in y direction turning sorry turning in the y direction and once it's in the y direction it will start the linear motion toward the y direction uh, yes so there is also another fourth type of the robot um, or you can see the third type of robot it's called car like robots so the car like robots they have their own kind of structure they are 
they have four wheels and then they have Ackermann steering it's a special type of steering you can see in these kind of robots uh, they they have the front steering just like cars how the how the car steers the the back wheels they are powered they are also differential differential means that when the when when this car turns it means that this if it's turning in this direction the left side wheels will turn slower than the right side wheels and so this kind of configuration it has um, it has their own kind of problems for example if i want to turn in this direction complete the robot in this direction let's say this is x direction and previously the robot was in y direction so it cannot turn only that's a problem unlike this this differential drive robots a two wheel sorry two wheel differential drive robots these kind the car like robots they cannot only turn they have to move some degree forward or in order to make a turn so their motion will be like this to make a turn or maybe a little bit longer but the benefit of the two wheeled differential drive robot is that they can turn only make a turn some other type of mobile robots we have leg legged mobile robots so they are particularly useful for the rough terrain where the terrain is not flat i think this is a most realistic and real world scenario normally the the terrain or the the roads the out, outdoor area they are not that smooth so the legs are perfect for these kind of locomotion okay the the last one the last one category of the mobile robot is the unmanned aerial vehicles so they are quadcopter is one of the example autonomous quadcopter how they work is they they have four motors with propellers they generate thrust downward thrust and this thrust lift the robot upward and this happens in in all the four propellers and how it works is that when it wants to the robot want to make some uh, move forward or in any direction so for example if the robot want to move quadcopter want to move forward uh, it has to do is to reduce the speed of these front two propellers reduce the speed of these two propellers or increase the speed of the backward two propellers and then the robot will start moving in this direction and same is true for any other direction the robot wants to move um, they have benefit they have some added benefit as compared to the wheeled mobile robots for example they have uh, the quadcopters have more degrees of freedom they can move in any direction they can change their direction they can move in any direction up down x y z axis so that's why they are very uh, they are very uh, agile they can change their direction instantaneously without turning or without any complex kinematics uh, but if you see the wheel mobile robot it has to it has to first first of all it has a limited degrees of freedom it cannot move in any direction it is only limited to the ground and then to change the direction it has to the wheel mobile has to maybe first turn in case if the wheel mobile robot is not omni wheel mobile robot
so now we will we shall we shall discuss the second type of uh, second type of robots they are called industrial robots and the first one is the cartesian coordinate robot cartesian coordinate robot they are uh, if you are familiar with the joints uh, cartesian coordinate robots have three prismatic joints or linear joints so the prismatic joints if you recall what you have studied in your machine dynamics prismatic joints can only move in linear direction they have only one degree of freedom okay this is the first one this is the first linear joint second one and the third one so so that's how they control x y and z motions so there the these kind of robot have a rectangular workspace it means they can work in a rectangular area they are easy to control and one of their uh, benefit is that they are precise they are accurate and they are precise a very good example is uh, a milling machine or a C, uh, or a uh, sorry 3d printer is also a good example of these kind of robots okay and then there are there is also a disadvantage that these kind of robots are slower relatively slower than other types of robots and we shall see why they are slower okay the next type of robot is the industrial robot is the delta robot delta robots they um, they have if you see in in this figure they have three uh, spherical joints sorry sorry three uh, three revolute joints here with the with the motors they have three motors and then three revolute joints and then six spherical joints you have here so at their advantage is that they are fast they are fast because if you see in this figure the motors are attached to the to the base not on the end effector or not on the on the links so that's why this makes the end effector and um, the links much lighter as compared to uh, the robot for example this one the cartesian coordinate robot where the there is also a weight on the i mean the weight was the motor weight was on the links also even to the end effector but here it's not the case the motors are not attached to the end effector or to the forearm you can say so this makes it very lightweight and fast and that's why these kind of robots are being used in fast packaging and sorting kind of applications their workspace is um, spherical okay the third type of industrial robot is the articulated robot articulated robot they are most common type of the industrial robot they have usually they have six axis motion or you can say six degrees of freedom and they they resemble like human arm that's why they sometimes call they call it robotic arm or manipulator arm so what makes them unique is that they have all uh, revolute revolute joints or rotary joints first here second one here one here here and then here here and here one two three four five six 
So, yeah. So the advantage of these kind of robot is that they can reach places where the other robots cannot reach because they have so many degrees of freedom so they can reach very in very difficult places for example let's see in an application where the, the robot has to pick an object from a table and put in a cupboard this robot can do this task easily but the cartesian coordinate robot or the delta robot they cannot so the disadvantage of these kind of robot is that they have relatively less speed than the other type of robots and this is because they have too many joints and also which makes them heavy and also difficult to many many parameters to control the, the applications are welding painting cutting assembling the fourth type of industrial robot is the SCARA robot SCARA stands for selective compliance automatic robotic arm they have two revolute joints and one prismatic joint so here is the revolute joint revolute joint and here we have a prismatic joint so they have three degrees of freedom so SCARA robot can be faster than the articulated robot in some cases uh, because it has less number of joints it is also very rigid and durable robot it is fast and the application its application is pick and place the best suitable application so the disadvantage of this kind of robot is that again the it cannot reach all the places for example to pick and place in a, a object in a cupboard from table to a cupboard this robot for this robot it will be difficult or maybe not possible okay next we have humanoid robots Humanoid robots are, they look more like humans. They have two legs, they have arms, and they also have like intelligence. They try to match also intelligence and social capability to match human beings. These type of robots are very expensive and very difficult to build and very few institutions own these kind of robots then we have soft robots soft robots are a different category of robots they are made they are made of different materials not like iron or steel but they try to develop these robots their actuators or their end effectors with some kind of rubber or silicon or plastic for example let's see this robot it, it has a structure made out of some kind of rubber and plastic also they have they have a different actuation actuator they they use some kind of pneumatic or fluid pressure to move these kind these arms or legs whatever you, you call them so for motion they use pneumatic or fluid pressure and the advantage of these kind of robot is that they they can handle delicate delicate objects for example if you want to pick pick uh, an egg 
using this soft robot it will be much safer and but if you want to do the same thing with a with the articulated robot or a scar robot with a steel gripper it it will be it will be difficult because the steel is already very hard and it can break the egg so finally we see the advantages and disadvantages of the robot so robots can be operated in dangerous environments and also remote in environments one example i already gave that in disaster situation for example um, an accident in a nuclear power plant humans cannot operate there because it's very risky it's very unhealthy so we can send robots there to operate to repair the damage and to help the other humans sending robots to a remote locations like mars or moons this is also a good application these kind of environments are not suitable for humans so humans cannot live there for a long time but robots can so this is another advantage of robot that they, they that they are helping us to do work in the environment where the humans cannot work speed so speed robots are much faster as compared to human this is um this is the this is the advantage of the robots that they can perform the same task much faster as compared to human beings the third advantage is power robots can be made much powerful as compared to humans a single robotic arm can lift a whole car and do assembly or welding operations but a human cannot so the power is also a very uh good advantage of a robot accurate and precise robots are accurate and precise if we compare them to human beings a human arm is normally very shaky so if we want to do some milling or something cutting um uh, it will be or assembling it will be very shaky operation because our our arms are not built for this purpose not for accuracy or precision but robots they are inherently very uh, rigid very accurate and precise and this is their advantage that we can use this their accuracy and precision to develop industrial products no boredom since the robots are not that intelligent and they only obey our commands so they don't get bored easily especially for the repetitive tasks in the industry unlike humans if you put humans and for the same repetitive task they will they might get bored or get angry but robots they don't get bored so now we will see some disadvantages of the robots high initial cost robots are expensive and if you want to purchase robots at the beginning it will be very costly job crisis or you can say economical problems so people are afraid that the robots will take their jobs and if you see in the western culture or the in industrial zone this is somehow true there are more and more robots replacing the humans and humans are now more 
focusing on um, other types of jobs for example previously they were painting the automobiles or assembling them and now robots are doing the thing and the third disadvantage is that they are less intelligent they are less intelligent that's why they need a supervision a constant supervision or monitoring from a human supervisor it means that they cannot uh, really detect the uncertain environments or the changing environments and that's why that makes them sometimes um, unsafe also so the summary of the today's lecture is we have we have defined what is a robot and what is robotics we learned the difference between mechatronics and robotics we talked about robot autonomy and levels of autonomy then we discussed the various real world applications of the robots We learned about the components of the robots and also we have seen some sensors and actuators that are commonly used in robots. We also learned about a little bit about sensor fusion, what are its advantages and we also talked about the difference between motion and locomotion. Um, we have discussed four major types of robots the mobile robots industrial robots humanoid robots and the soft robots and then finally we have discussed the advantages and disadvantages of the robots that's the end of the lecture thank you very much